Good morning. Uh, I hope you're doing well out there. Uh, whether you're here in service with us or at home, I hope I'm finding you well. Uh, and that your week was amazing and you're ready to get started on another awesome week. So welcome to our service, everybody. We're so glad you're with us this morning. Uh, masked up, socially distanced. Uh, it's an amazing opportunity, however we can do it, to be together in presence with God and worship with God. So thank you for being here. Uh, to get our service started, just one quick announcement I have, and that we are having a huge candy drive at church for our big Halloween celebration we're going to have. It's going to be a drive through trick-or-treat on October 25th, that evening. So please, 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 if you can, bring some candy up to the church. You can drop it off in the church office, or if you're coming to service, you can drop it back off in the narthex. But all that candy is going to be in here. We're going to get it like individually sealed up so it's safe, and then we're going to hand that out on the 25th. So if you can please bring some candy, we would love that. Uh, or if you'd like to help hand out candy, uh, so you can dress up in your costume, you can show up and uh, we'll get you situated where you can hand out candy to some of the cars that will be driving through. Uh, both help is needing. Miss Rachel has her hand raised. Okay, so Miss Rachel is offering you an opt-out clause uh, for dress up. So if you don't want to dress up and you just want to hand out candy, she said that is okay too. So if you want to show up in just your street clothes to hang out and hand out candy and see all the kiddos and all the families that drive through, you're welcome to do that. But we need candy and we need helpers to pass out the candy. So if you can do either one of those, please do. Uh, contact Rachel if you want to help pass out candy. If you want to donate candy, just bring it up to service or bring it up to the church office. Either one uh, is super helpful. Um, and you'll notice a couple of new decorations around the stage this morning. One is right here by me. Um, and there are some others you'll see as the camera moves back and forth. Uh, if you're here, you've already seen them because they're nice and bright. Uh, but it is, uh, it is pastor appreciation. And so we are very, very thankful for Brother Justin and all the work and energy and effort uh, and prayers and time that he puts in uh, to, to uh, pastor his flock, us. Um, as the best way he can. And so we're very, very thankful for him for doing that. So you'll see those decorations out and then that's why they're here. So I encourage you to bombard him with text messages, phone calls, and cards to say thank you uh, to Brother Justin. Uh, but without uh, anything else going on, let's go to the Lord in prayer and start this service off. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning just so full of joy and thanksgiving uh, for the many blessings that you pour out on us each and every week we're here on your planet, Lord. I just pray that as we continue on our journey with you, um, that you uh, bless us and bless everyone, Lord. Uh, hear our prayers, hear our praise this morning. Let it be pleasing to you and to send your spirit to fill us up from top to bottom so we overflow with your love. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. Oh, oh. I knocked over the balloons, of course. Don't worry. They're still happy stars. <laughs> okay. Right? Oh, my goodness. All right, Mr. Russell, will you bring up my, um, my bucket and welcome mat so we can get ready for children's time? Um, so... We've been talking about, it's um, October, which is Halloween month, and when you get to go trick-or-treating, you always have certain things that you know you can get in the door, like we knock on the door. The light's on and the welcome mat's out. Um, but October is not just Halloween, whenever you get to go trick-or-treating. Um, and I'm taking a break from children's time today, and I need um, Aaron and um, Lori and Miss Becky to come up here for a few minutes, please. So family moment is a true family. <laughs> um, uh, can you do it in your... Um, so today, yes, we have clergy appreciation. And today we want to take a moment to recognize the ones that hold our hands and guide us in times of happiness and in grief. These guys have chosen to lead us uplift us, pray for us, and with us, and love us as God loves them. Justin, wherever he's at, come on up, Justin. Justin, come here, and there's a delay, so Justin, start making your way. Um, you have been with us a short two years, but in that time, you've dedicated your time and energy to walk with us, to cry with us, and to pray with us. He's coming. I see him. Finding the love of his life in seminary, as we know as Susan, he and Susan have been in ministry together since 2001. Justin leads with honesty and passion. Yeah. Yeah, we're still trying to stay in our bubble. But let us not forget that we would also like to, to recognize our very own Russell. Or as the kids would call him, Mr. Russell. Even though he has officially stepped behind the pulpit, pulpit in the past two years, he has been ministering to our kids and our youth for about 10. Russell's cool, calm, and collected guidance is always fun and engaging. Both of you lead us and our families with passion and love. You lead by example, even though the times have been tough and 2020 has been down outright hard. The two of you have both shared a passion for Christ with those around you, regardless of the circumstances. We've collected some cards and some pictures and words of encouragement that we will share with you. Sorry, I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> um, that the congregation has had along with gift cards to use on yourselves. We understand that y'all constantly give to others, so now we are giving to you. As you both always say, just keep it simple, love God, and love people. And let everybody say, as Justin says, amen, amen, and amen. We love you. you to Denise Willoughby. She's the one that coordinated all of us. So let's do a little hand for Denise as though she doesn't want it. Hey, give him this box. All right. Neither Miss Rachel. Well, good morning. As uh, you will have, will learn that the sermon is taking a break. 
It was really interesting this week when my brother Justin asked me to get a song together. I asked him what the, what the sermon title was, and he just texted me, take a break. Well, the previous text before that was, I know you've been busy with your classwork and work and your full-time job, so I just thought, okay, he doesn't want me to sing. Just take a break. So I had to text him back and say, so you want me to take the week off? And he said, no, that's the, ser- that's the title of the sermon, <laughs> take a break. But that, that's a, a great time for us to think about what we need to do in life is sometimes just take a break and to be still and listen to God. So my song this morning is called Steel.
Amen. Thank you, Brother Doug. That was beautiful. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 33 through 38. They said to him, John's disciples often fast and pray, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours go on eating and drinking. Jesus answered, can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. In those days, they will fast. He told them this parable. No one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch an old one. Otherwise, they will have torn the new garment and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one pours new wine into an old wineskin. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and the wine will run out and the wineskins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskins. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This week I have um, been thinking quite a bit about a, a number of people uh, in the life of our uh, church family and in, in our community, uh, thinking in particular about um, some young expectant moms um, working full time at a job and, and, and carrying a baby in such a crazy time, uh, thinking about a couple of women in the life of our church um, with, with the passing of their mothers. Uh, thinking about uh, uh, someone whose car broke down at not the best time and, and never is it really. But uh, th thinking about uh, those who uh, are extra cautious and careful, those in a, in a cancer battle and, and even that much more concerned about, about their bubble. Uh, thinking about uh, so many uh, in our church maybe too who sometimes perhaps find themselves at, at wit's end and, and just wish they could get a break. I, I think about our young people uh, who are trying to figure out what this is all about, uh, whether they're uh, at school virtually or at home or playing ball and, and balancing a schedule, uh, all of the, the things that, that they're trying to do. I think about the way that many of our families too, when, when some of life's moments come along, birthdays or, or even the death of a loved one, the ways that we have tried to keep our distance even with the people that we're closest to. Uh, and, and in the midst of, of all of these things, I, I hope and pray for the, the grace of God to be with us and, and to be among us. Uh, I want to ask you, if you will, just to, to bow your heads and pray as we uh, look at the Word together this morning. Uh, God, I just, I give you thanks for your grace. Um, Sometimes it, it, it comes uh, when it seems like there is little else left. Uh, when it feels like the last minute there is the moment when your spirit just captures us. When we find the peace that we need, the, 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 the forgiveness and the, the freedom from, from frustrations. And so God, I, I pray that your spirit would be upon us uh, as we look into your word for a moment. Uh, that we take your word uh, seriously, but that we take ourselves lightly. Uh, and, and God, that, that somehow you would give us each what we need. Uh, that, that you would give strength to the weak, that you would, that you would give comfort, uh, that you would heal our sick. Uh, Father, that, that, that somehow, uh, in some way, uh, that you would draw us close together even in a moment when it seems that we're apart. We thank you for, uh, for your word that instructs our thoughts uh, and, and opens the doors of our hearts and our church and our lives to loving our neighbors. Uh, for we pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. You know, we find uh, Jesus here as we'll be looking in October in, in Luke in the 5th and 6th chapter. Uh, we find him as we have uh, these many weeks and months as we have followed his life and teachings. The, the calling of the first disciples and the first miracles. The, 
the healing of the sick, the paralytic at the mat, the calming of the storms, the, the multiplying of the fish and the loaves, the changing of water into wine. We, we find Jesus here and there and everywhere in Bethesda and Capernaum, in the small towns, in the Hunt Hill country where the hillbillies live. We, we find him uh, in the city, in the synagogue. We find him here and there and, and everywhere uh, speaking the good news and, and of new life. Uh, coming in and offering in the midst uh, of division and, and corruption and trouble, we come him, come, we hear him coming offering life and, and life abundantly. But in so many settings, as we find him again today, we see that the that the Pharisees uh, ha- have come uh, with a bad attitude, as it seems that they so often do. Last week they were, they were mad at him that, that he had called the tax collector uh, to follow him. And then he even went so far as to go to his house to break bread. And they accused him of, of eating with sinners. We find that, that this week they're, they're mad at him. Uh, the haters are going to hate because they're feasting, uh, following the great feast of the tabernacles and all the places that they've been and, and all the ministry that has happened uh, in their journey day after day and night after night through storm and through hunger and through sickness that, that as they are fellowshipping together, they are on to them for not fasting on the day that the Pharisees decided that they should. Sometimes I, I wondered if, if the Pharisees were around today and if they were to have a credit card, if they'd get a winer's club card instead of a diner's club card. You know, they would go out for dinner and they would all be too cheap, uh, you know, with, with little alligator arms to pick up the check. Uh, you know, and then one of them would finally have to get out their winer's club card and, and scrutinize the bill and, and complain about how much the cheesecake is after they've already eaten it. Say, well, I could have made one better than this at home, you know. I just think about the way that that so often uh, we find them in the Gospels, those people that are so uh, good at complaining, they're practically professionals. They almost needed to have a gill or a badge or a license. They kind of did. Because of how easily and how readily and how often and regularly they managed to criticize and complain in nearly every situation and setting. If it were uh, October, and it likely was, uh, in the time when this passage took place, that is, that the Feast of the Tabernacles had begun at the the last uh, uh, Sabbath of September and through the first Sabbath of October, those eight days that the feast would go on and then the the days following it, I wonder maybe, you know, if if, uh, I had been there, uh, if I had had an opportunity, I might have offered them uh, a package of Kit Kat. Now, they're not a sponsor today, uh, but but I might have offered them uh, to take a break already. Amen? To take a break already. I mean, I, I don't know if you remember the song or if it even still is one, but like when I was a kid, they had a little jingle. It was like, give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Right? And in theory, I guess, you know, there's two in there supposedly. Maybe the other one's meant to share with someone. I'm not sure. I'll have to figure that out later. But, but sometimes I, I look into the passage and I marvel at how often Jesus, when he's being confronted and conflicted about the most minuscule of things, meets people's critique with compassion. How often he meets people's anxiety with calmness. How often he speaks to our storms to be still. It's so striking the the presence of Jesus in the company of everyone else. You may pause just to think of it for a moment yourself. the, The calming and peaceful shalom that is found in the presence of the Lord. Even as uh, David would write in the 23rd Psalm, even in the presence of his enemies. It seems that his cup is, is always running over, that his head is always anointed with oil. 
in, in chapter 5 and 6 says, as all of these things are happening, as all even of the criticism and complaint is happening in the midst of miracles and fellowship and the, the welcoming in of, of so many people, of children, uh, of adults, and even those darn sinful tax collectors. God bless you all that paid some taxes this week. Uh, that was not the point of the sermon, but God bless. I'm trying to remember. I think Brother Dennis told me he went to pay some taxes this week, and somebody else did too. Uh, uh, so God, God bless you with that. Give, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. But, but I notice in chapter 5 and in chapter 6 as well that the Scripture tells us that even Jesus knew t- to take a break. To take a break. The, the Scripture tells us that, that Jesus withdrew. That there was a, a point and a place when there was no need to argue anymore with people who weren't going to listen. There was no need to become more frustrated in an already challenging situation. There was no need, and I remember uh, a number of years ago, a wise gentleman in a church where I was serving uh, with plenty of silver hair that was well earned said to me, Son, do you know what the first rule of holes is? And I was really kind of just struck. I said, I don't know. He said, stop digging. Stop digging is the first rule of holes. I, I see the way that Jesus encourages and models for us. That sometimes the, the thing to do is just to stop. Sometimes even a math uh, uh, problem, it's worth putting your pencil down for a moment. You know, there's only so many times you can erase the page before it's going to tear a hole right through. Now, friends, I'm not saying to not complete all of the math assignment and to do your best. Please do. Note to self and parents. Go go ahead, even if you say, I had someone in church a while back, uh, daughter was making great grades in school. True story, all the time making great grades and got back a a a math paper and it was 50, you know, out of 100. And they asked their daughter, uh, true, why does this, what happened here? And why did you make an F? I mean, big red F on the top, 50. And they looked, and they were looking over the paper and going right down top to bottom. Every single problem on there was perfect. All of them were perfect. Looking over where she was figuring on the sides, all the answers were perfect. And then turned the page over on the back, and they were all blank. and, And she had asked her daughter, how come you didn't do the other side? And she said, I was just too tired. It's true. I'm not, that's not something I got on an email. I lived it, y'all. It's true. Now, I want to encourage you after you take a break to go ahead and work on the other side, friends. Okay, let's at least uh, make an effort. But, but Jesus, I mean, we'll read about it. You can see it in the Scripture as we continue the next uh, few weeks in reading through the Gospels. Uh, as you look in, in 5 and 6, you'll see in both chapters, neighbor to neighbor, and time to time, and in between, here and there, and everywhere, and all that He's doing, that Jesus withdrew to pray. To pray. That he, that he took the opportunity, that he took time to pray. Now I figure that, that if you have time to be really frustrated, you do have time to pray. I've been working on this one too. If you have time to be really sad, you have time to pray. If you have time to worry, you... You have time to pray. I know it's true. My dad used to say it to me all the time. I I can remember when I did not make uh, very much above a passing grade in calculus 2 in college and and trying to explain myself and defend myself and the language barrier between myself and my Russian calculus professor and and all of the things I was worried about and how the world, and I'm going to flunk out and I'm going to this and I'm that. And he said, if you have time to worry, you have time to pray about it. It's true. I know that, that, that our lives are busy. I know that times are challenging and confusing. It seems like the rules change all the time, not just for the Razorbacks, uh, for the rest of us. It's true, isn't it? There, there is time for you and for me if we, if we take that time. There's that same time for you and me if we, if we take the time. If we take the time. I, 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 I don't know what all the Spirit of God spoke into the Lord Jesus' heart in these moments. The Scripture doesn't tell us exactly. 
But something happened in these moments. Something powerful happened in these moments. As rigid as other people were, as much as they were trying to push Jesus to the point of breaking, he was flexible enough to, to get out of the situation and to take some time to pray and to be filled again. I imagine that there were, were moments when Jesus' heart was empty. I know that the scripture tells me about the way that he wept for Jerusalem, the way that he wept for Lazarus, about the way that he looked over the city, the Bible says, as a mother chick does her brood, and that he had concern for them all. But I know that he was flexible enough to, to get out of some of those situations and to take the, the time to be filled, to be renewed. You know, he didn't exactly just sort of gloss over things either. That's not to be Pollyanna about everything in our life. That's not to pretend that there aren't things that need to be addressed because they need be. Wrongs need to be made right. And there are things such as justice and, and mercy. But, but it is to say that Jesus doesn't, as he tells us in this passage with the wineskins, that he doesn't just sort of patch over everything either. He tells them that, that there should be new wineskins. That, that maybe some of the things that, that you and I have been doing, the way that we've tried to, to navigate, negotiate, and, and make our way along, maybe there's some ways in which it isn't working. Maybe the routine that you had for however many weeks or months at the beginning of some of this was working, but it's not working anymore. Maybe you need to change your coffee. I tried that this week. I thought, we'll just try some different coffee. Miss Denise said, we need some dark coffee. And I thought, okay, we'll try that. We can be flexible enough. You know, I invite you to take your arms if you have some. One or two. And, and, and give it one of these if you can. You know, and if you've got a shoulder injury like Brother Doug, don't hurt yourself. You know, you might even ch check your fingers out. We'll just give them a little wiggle or your hands. You'll find out that you're a little more flexible than you maybe remembered that you were. Now, if I go too long, you're going to get stove up from sitting. So let me get to the finish line. You are really stronger than you think that you are. And your capacity for enduring... It's greater than you realized it was. Some of us who, who didn't live through the Great Depression or World War II have really had our capacity stretched pretty far like those plastic sacks that they give you at the dollar store. You know, there's a limit on how many cans you can get in there before the bottom breaks out. I promise you. Trust me on this. Uh, there's a limit on how many of those need to go in a plastic bag. You really don't want to put two gallons of milk in one. I learned a long time ago, sacking groceries at heart. There's a limit. You got to double those wineskins sometimes. The Lord Jesus is not interested in just patching over some of your problems. Some of your old hurts or habits or hang ups aren't worth hanging on to anymore. In fact, the, the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 that you and I, that, that anyone in Christ is a new creation. Amen? And so. Whatever it is that, that you're facing, it may be physical as, as many of us have, have health concerns and challenges. And it may be financial, that, that the bills aren't uh, going down, although your, your pay may be or your hours may be or your customers may be. But in, but in all that you and I are facing, I, I simply want to invite you to consider that even Jesus took some time that even Jesus took some time uh, to, to give himself some slack. It's a lot easier to untie a boat when there's slack uh, than when there isn't. Or even a bulldozer. I learned that not too long ago with Mr. Joel. You know, you got to have some slack to undo the chain uh, of a bulldozer once it's been wrenched down with a turnbuckle. Isn't that right? You got to have some slack. I want to invite you, whatever it is that, that has happened, that you've said or done, or others have too, that, that, that today's a, a day to hit a reset button. It's a new day, uh, is Sunday. The, the end of a weekend and the beginning of another, and you know, who knows what we're going to face. Tomorrow's a Monday. I don't want to discourage you too much, but tomorrow's going to be Monday, unfortunately. But you got this. That's right. No, is that 
Brody said that. That's right. But you got this. In, in your time, in your time when you fold your hands at the table or, or before you click out the light at the end of a day, in your time and in God's time, find that you were called, that you were equipped, that you were empowered. That you are smart enough and brave enough and strong enough to endure. That you're flexible enough, even in some sticky situations, uh, to get through. And, and there might even be enough grace poured into your wineskin that you have some to offer to someone else too. So God bless you this day and this week in the things that you do, and in the company that you keep. Remember uh, that the candy theme for this week is give yourself a break, y'all. Give yourself a break. We're going to get through this. We're going to figure this out in God's time and with God's help. Amen, amen, and amen. Uh, I want to pause now just to pray, uh, and especially to pray for someone out there uh, this day uh, who might simply uh, need the Lord. So may we pray? God, I just uh, give thanks for your word and for your grace that we find in there so often. You tell us, uh, Lord Jesus, that, that the thief comes to lie, to kill, and to destroy, but that you have come that we would have life and have it abundantly. And so, Lord, I, I pray for someone today who may be at their wit's end. That whatever it is, they could throw up their hands and just say it's not working. Whether trying to fix something or someone or even themselves. I pray for that person today, Lord, who, who keeps getting unsolicited advice that feels a lot more like criticism. And maybe they too, Lord, feel like quitting. I pray for someone, Lord, who this day feels you knocking at the door of their heart. And I pray, Lord, that they would open and, and that you might go in. That they might simply confess and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. Come into my life. Be the, the Lord and Savior of, of me. I pray, Lord, for your church as we uh, go about uh, being your witnesses uh, in the world this week. Lord, that maybe there's a place where we can uh, either break the bread or, or simply to, to break the, the moment of struggle by offering someone your grace. Bless us, Lord, that we can be a blessing today and this week in all that we do. For we pray in your name and in the power of your Holy Spirit, Jesus. Amen. Our hymn of response this morning is Grace Greater Than All Our Sin. You know this hymn, I'm sure, so I invite you to join me in singing. We'll just sing a couple of verses, and uh, be sure to keep your mask on if you're in God's house. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our guilt and our sin yonder on calvary's mount outpoured there where the blood of the lamb was spilt grace grace god's grace grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace grace god's grace grace that is greater than all our sin sin and despair like the sea waves cold threaten the soul with infinite loss 
grace that is greater, yes, grace untold, points to the refuge, the mighty cross. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Hey, man, we thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, whether you're here in person or you can catch the stream later, we're so glad you joined us this morning for worship. Uh, we're so thankful that you're here this morning. Uh, just a quick reminder about the candy drop-offs and the church officer here. If you want to donate Kit Kats to help people take a break, we'll take them. Uh, but if you're more of a Twix fan, we like Twix and Snickers and Three Musketeers, whatever kind of candy you'd like to donate uh, for the October 25th drive through trick-or-treating will be wonderful. If you'd like to donate some time and help hand out that candy, please get in contact with Rachel. Uh, but for the week ahead, uh, I pray that the Lord moves in your life and uh, you remember that uh, it's okay to take a break when you need to take a break. In his name, amen. <laughs> 